What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over what is the Google Display Network. So I'm going to be answering that question with this video and I'm going to give you a high level overview of the Google Display Network and everything you need to know whether you're an advertiser who wants to run advertisements across the Google Display Network or you're a publisher, a website owner that wants to put advertisements on your website and monetize your content. So the Google Display Network is made up of websites, mobile apps, videos, and Gmail. So for a few quick examples, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up cnbc.com slash cybersecurity. So if you go to this page, you'll probably see an advertisement at the very top. It might be different than this advertisement. It might be the same exact advertisement. So you can see here HBO Max, where HBO meets so much more. Their call to action is start your free trial. Right over here on the right hand side, ey.com slash consulting. So these are both two different Google AdSense ads that are running on this website because it's part of the Google Display Network. I'll go over targeting in a little bit, but let's just say I do click on this HBO Max ad. It's going to open up a new page and it's going to bring me right to HBO Max. So the advertiser, HBO in this case, is going to get charged. And ultimately, their goal is for me to come here and start my free trial. So coming back over here, going over a little bit more information before I get into some different examples, but the Google Display Network includes over 2 million websites, all of YouTube, Gmail inboxes, and it reaches 90% of the internet. Now, not every single YouTube channel is monetized, but any YouTube channel and any YouTube video that's monetized, it's part of the Google Display Network. Gmail inboxes, so people who use Gmail are going to get ads in their inbox, particularly in the social and promotions tabs, and those are both part of the Google Display Network and reaches 90% of the total internet. So that means if you're running ads across the Google Display Network, you can reach a lot of unique people with your advertisements and hopefully drive some new customers to your business. So some different examples here. So I already went over a CNBC.com example, but if you just go to your their homepage, you start scrolling down, you can see right here, this is an advertisement. So Capital Group, American Funds, if I click on this advertisement, it's gonna bring me to their website. The next one is mobile app advertisements. So these are some screenshots of the CBS Sports app. So if you go to the CBS Sports app and really a lot of different mobile apps and I'm just right on the homepage here and you're scrolling down, you can see there's an advertisement space right here. There's an advertisement at the bottom for Adidas Ultra Boost. And then right here in the middle, you're gonna see there's an advertisement for dog food down at the bottom. This is on a specific article. And then again over here, just another example, the same exact ad, the Ultra Boost for an Amazon advertisement and Adidas. So if I click on this, it's probably gonna bring me to Amazon directly to this product page. Now the next example is gonna be video. So if I go to YouTube and I type in chicken Parmesan recipe. I click on the top result and you can see the top result was from Natasha's Kitchen, which is a large YouTube channel, a lot of subscribers. And you can see right here, this advertisement is part of the Google Display Network. This advertisement right here is part of the Google Display Network. So this is actually a remarketing ad because I was on Wayfair.com. I end up being on Wayfair a lot because I work with them with my own websites. So I get a lot of remarketing advertisements from Wayfair.com. Now, last but not least is Gmail ads. So if you go to your Gmail inbox, if you're using Gmail and you go to the social tab or the promotions tab, you're gonna see I have some advertisements at the top here. So Google ads, rugs.com, HelloFresh, and the farmer's dog. These are all different advertisements and they're all part of the Google Display Network. So if you're gonna start running advertisements, you probably wanna be familiar with the targeting and the ad types. So you can set your targeting based on locations, languages, audiences, and there's a lot of different audiences you can target, demographics, content, you can use targeting expansion to expand your existing audiences that you've created, and there's automated targeting options as well. Now, when it comes to ad types, I already showed you a few, but one of the main ad types is responsive display ads. This is actually the default advertisement type for display network advertising campaigns. Banner ads, so these are advertisements that you create and upload. Video ads, Gmail ads, and then what are known as Lightbox ads, aka engagement ads. Now there's other ad types as well, some more advanced advertisement types, but these are the main ones that advertisers are gonna use if they're running ads across the Google Display Network. So the next thing I wanna do is show you the way to target your advertisements with Google Display Advertising campaigns. So if we come over, we open up our Google Ads account, so I'm in my Google Ads account for farmhousegoals.com, 
And if I open up farmhousegoals.com real quick, you're gonna see there's an advertisement at the top here. So this website is part of the Google Display Network. I have it monetized with Google AdSense advertisements, which means that advertisers can either target my website directly with their ads or their ads might appear on my website based on their other targeting options. So we come back over here and we just click to create a new campaign. So for creating a new campaign, you can choose different goals here to run ads across the Google Display Network. For this, I'm just gonna click on Leads and we're gonna go to Display and I'm gonna choose a standard display campaign. Now, one thing you can do is use a smart display campaign. And for this, you don't have to set your targeting. Google ads is automatically gonna go out, send your ads across the Google Display Network and essentially try to drive you the best possible results within your budget. You can also use Gmail campaigns. Now I have videos on my channel for smart display campaigns, Gmail campaigns, Google display advertising tutorials. So I'm just gonna select standard display campaign here. Now, if you are interested in some of my display network advertising tutorials, I would highly recommend checking out my playlist where I have a Google display ads tutorial. I have a short inversion strategy, targeting Gmail ads, smart display ads, a lot more videos that you can learn from. If you're interested in this content, I'll put this playlist URL in the video description so you can easily find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. We're selecting a standard display campaign and we're going to click on continue. So when you're creating a campaign like this, you're going to see it's going to first start with locations. So that's one option you have when it comes to targeting is to set your locations where your customers are located. You have the option to target specific locations and also exclude specific locations. Now, if we keep scrolling down, you can target based on languages. So you always want to select the languages your customers speak here. So we'll keep scrolling down. And now you're going to see as we come down, we're creating our ad group. So some of the different things you can target. So let's just collapse this for now. We have audiences, demographics, there's content targeting, and then targeting expansion here is going to allow you to reach more users by letting Google look for high performing audiences similar to your target. So this is a way to expand your targeting across the Google Display Network while trying to keep your cost per conversion around the same exact rate. So one of the best ways I can explain the Google Display Network to you is come here to content targeting. So this is where you want your ads to show. So for example, I can set my targeting as cnbc.com slash cybersecurity and my advertisement might appear here. It might appear over here on the right hand side. So my advertisement might appear across this page. So if we click on content targeting and let's just say we choose placements here. So with placements, you can see websites, YouTube channels, YouTube videos, apps, and app categories. So let's just enter finance here. So let's just say I want to target finance websites, finance YouTube channels. So if we select finance here, you can see there's 88 websites. There's probably a lot more websites we can target, but these are going to be some of the most closely related websites. You can also type in investing, retirement, so a lot of those different categories. If I click on websites here, you can see crowdfundinsider.com. So all of these different websites, I can select to run my advertisements across them. Now, a best practice is to go to each individual website, if you're not familiar with them, to make sure that they're a good fit for your ads. So that's just one option you have here. You're gonna have a huge list of websites that you can target with your advertisements. And if we keep scrolling down here, you're gonna see a lot of websites that you might not be familiar with at all. So if we come back here, you're gonna see YouTube channels. So if we click here, so I can target Yahoo Finance, Whiteboard Finance, Bloomberg Markets and Finance, Honest Finance. So a lot of different options with YouTube channels that I can target as well. Specific YouTube videos. So I can try to find some really popular YouTube videos. So this one right here is 962,000 views. So I can click this and I can start targeting my ads across this YouTube video. Now, mind you, you can select an assortment of websites, YouTube channels, videos, apps, and even app categories as well as you're targeting your ads. So apps, you're going to see again, Yahoo Finance, Stock Quote, Stock Twits. So anybody who's using these apps, anybody who's using some of these different websites and who's visiting these YouTube channels is probably going to have a strong interest in finance. So they're a good place to run your ads. And you can do this for really any category you want. So let's just say I choose farmhouse decor. So my website, farmhousegoals.com, let's just say I want to run my ads across some websites. So you can see these are all different websites and a lot of them are going to be very geared towards farmhouse decor home decor in general and I can go through each individual website you can see impressions per week and I can choose websites I can choose YouTube channels I can come over here and choose YouTube videos and you can see there's a lot of different places where I can run my advertisements that are gonna be extremely targeted so people are gonna be interested in coming to my website and hopefully purchasing something from me 
So that's the first way that I can show you the Google Display Network is with placements. So when you're targeting content, placements refers to specific websites, channels, videos, and apps. You can also just come here and let's just say I do content targeting. You can use keywords, but I think Google Ads is gonna start getting rid of that. If we click on keywords, you can see they're telling us to try custom intent audiences now, a new version of audience keywords. So what I would recommend doing is not targeting keywords with content, I would use placements, and then you can also just come in here and choose topics. So if I come into topics, and again, we'll just use our finance example, we'll click on enter, you're gonna see, I can come here, do business finance, commercial lending, investment banking, finance, investing. So I'm only gonna be targeting websites that are about these topics. So it's a great way to target large groups of websites and YouTube channels and videos and apps. And I can ensure that the people who are seeing my ads are probably gonna be somewhat interested in whatever it is that I'm offering. Okay, so we'll clear all at this point. I'm gonna click on done. So now to go through some of the different targeting options above. So with people, people who you want to reach. So if we come back over here real quick, I went over display network targeting with locations, languages, and then I went over content, targeting expansion. So automated targeting, that's gonna be when you're running smart display campaigns that allows Google to essentially go find the best targets for you. Now the other two big options are audiences and demographics. So if we come back over here, we'll use audiences first. So what I can do is come over to browse and you can see from top to bottom, the way I look at this, and I've gone over this a lot in other videos, but at the very bottom, remarketing similar audiences, in-market audiences, and specifically custom intent audiences are gonna be the best way to drive actual conversions for your website. Some of these other options up here, detailed demographics, affinity, custom affinity, and even life events, I think are gonna be more very top of the funnel when you're trying to reach people for who are not familiar with your brand, you're really just trying to get them familiar with your brand and your products. But what you can do is use remarketing, so people who have watched my YouTube videos, people who have visited my website, I can come right here and say, anybody who's been to my website over the last 540 days, I wanna target them with my ads. Coming back here, similar audiences. So with similar audiences, what Google Ads does is they take your remarketing audiences, so that all users 540 days one that I just went over, and they're gonna create audiences that are gonna be the closest users on the Google Display Network to the people in my remarketing audiences. These lists are created automatically, these similar audiences lists, as you create your website visitors lists or any YouTube channel lists, similar audiences are gonna be created. Now, in-market audiences refers to people who are actively in the market to purchase something. So with in-market audiences, let's just say I come here to autos and vehicles and we'll do motor vehicles and I come down here to motor vehicles by brand and I come over to Audi. That means that people are actively researching or planning to buy an Audi just based on their what their websites they're visiting, some of the searches that they're doing in the Google search network. Google's able to put people in these really targeted categories. Now coming back over here and with life events, so we're gonna collapse this to life events. So business creation, for example, someone who recently started a business, college graduation, someone who's graduating soon or recently graduated. So different ways you can target people based on the life events that they're going through. Now custom intent audiences are like in-market audiences, but you can actually create them yourselves. So if I click on the dropdown for custom intent audiences, you can see I have my farmhouse goal sample here. So essentially the way this audience is set up is it's targeting people who are searching these keywords. So farmhouse decor, farmhouse sinks, farm style apron sink, rustic country farmhouse decor. So there's a huge list of keywords here and people who are more likely to use those keywords are gonna see my advertisements. So these are really good audiences to target beyond remarketing and beyond similar audiences. Now, affinity and custom affinity, interests and habits. So if I come to affinity and I go to banking and finance, avid investors, these are people that like to invest. They're not currently in the market for anything, but if you're a company that wants to promote your investing platform, they could be a good group of people to reach, but it doesn't mean they're actively looking for a new investing platform. They might be completely set on whatever they're using. So the way I look at these different audiences that you can target is really top to bottom is gonna be the very top are gonna be the least likely to convert on your website and the very bottom are gonna be the most likely to convert on your website. I mostly stay in these bottom two categories. Now demographics, what you can do is take a targeted audience and narrow it to people based on their age, gender, parental status, or household income. 
So I can say I only want to reach males who are, let's just say, 25 to 44. Uh, so we'll get rid of all these other categories who are parents and let's just say household income are in the top 50%. So that means I'm only going to reach those people across the Google Display Network and I can narrow that with specific audiences and then I can narrow it further by saying I only want my ads to show, let's just say, across specific topics. So if I come over here to topics, I can choose my finance topic here. So I only want to reach men 25 to 44. I can say who have an interest in something related to finance when they visit web pages, apps, and videos about finance. And then as you would come down here, what you can do is use targeting expansion. That's one option that you have. And then you also want to create your advertisements. So I went over some of the different ad types. I would highly recommend if you're running display network advertising campaigns just to use responsive display ads. I have videos on my channel about how to create responsive display ads and some best practices. So hopefully that all makes sense about what the Google Display Network is. I think the best way to really understand is coming into placements and seeing the active websites that you can target with your ads. But one of the best ways to target is just based on audiences. Most of the ads you see are gonna be that you're in a company's remarketing audience, you're in an in-market audience, or you fall into the category of a custom intent audience. And that's the reason why you're seeing an advertisement. So if you have any questions about the Google Display Network, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.